Hello and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, we will fix skewed vertical lines in just a few seconds within the Camera Raw editor. So let's go. Here we have the raw file. If you want to follow along, you can find the download link in the description of this video. And to fix those vertical lines, all we need to do is to go into the Geometry tab down here. Here we have a bunch of different options. First, I do want to show you the options I usually don't use. Up here you have a full auto option, which just applies all the settings by itself. I don't like it that much because, of course, you will lose control over all those settings. Then next, there is the level option to straighten the horizon, of course. Might be useful, but again, I don't use that option at all. Here comes a very helpful thing. And that's the vertical option right here. Clicking on that will automatically fix those skewed vertical lines, as you can see. Again, I need to say I don't use that option because I want to do it manually. I just want to show you all those settings up here. And then, of course, there's an option for the vertical lines, the horizontal lines, and the level. Finally, with the last button on the right side, we can draw our own guidelines to fix the lens distortion. And as we want to fix those vertical lines, I'm just creating a line right here. And this tool needs a second line. So let's create one on the other side. And this way we can easily fix those uneven lines. While this last button might be the most helpful of those tools, I actually don't use them as I said before. So let me clear those guides and deactivate all those settings. What I like to do on my images is to simply play around with the sliders down here. We want to fix the vertical lines, so we're going to use the vertical slider. In this case, we are going to increase it. And you can see the camera raw editor will overlay a grid for us on our image, just so we can precisely straighten those lines. So that's looking like a good spot. Of course, due to those adjustments, we will get a gap somewhere in the image because the image will get distorted in a way. If you want, you can simply say constrain crop. Photoshop or Lightroom, if you're using Lightroom, will automatically crop out those gaps. However, I don't want to lose any part of the image and I'm just filling this gap up there using the content we have for later in Photoshop. So as you can see, that is a very easy fix for those skewed vertical lines. And since we are done with adjusting those lines, let me finish the post processing, so feel free to stay. After the geometry tab, let's go back into the basic stuff. Also right away, I do want to change the profile to Adobe Landscape, just to get a little more saturation going on here. For the white balance, I do want to make this image a little warmer, so I'm going to bring up the temperature. I don't want to overdo it, but a little more warmth will look pretty good on here just like that. So we get a little more sunset colors in here. All in all, this image is a bit too dark for my taste. So let's bring up the exposure, just like that. The histogram is still looking good. I do, however, want to bring down the highlights, especially for that bright part on the left side. All right, then let's see. I do think we need to add more contrast. So I'm going to bring down the shadows. Let's bring them down quite a bit like this. And I also want to bring up the whites for more contrast. All right. Now I might want to add a soft look to this image. So let's try and raise the blacks. Okay. And compared to before, the image is a lot brighter. We did lose a lot of those blue color tones, but that was the goal for me anyway. I think it looks better with those warm tones. And of course, we have straightened the image. Let's see if I need to crop it any further because I think the subject might not be in the center here. Kind of looks good. And let's just apply some vibrance and some saturation on this shot. Of course, I want this to be colorful and that's helping quite a bit here. Awesome. Let's further work on the contrast by using a few local adjustments. First off, however, I do want to add a little bit of glow on the left side. Therefore, I'm creating a radial gradient. Just drag it up like this over the bright spot. And first off, I'm going to push the blacks. And I'm also dropping the dehaze for a stronger glow effect. 
just like that. And I do want to have some more warm tones in here, so I'm bringing up the temperature and I'm also bringing up the tint. Perfect. Then let's work a little more on the sky. Therefore, I'm using a simple sky selection mask right here. This should work pretty good on this shot because the sky is very clearly separated from the rest. I only want to affect the very top part of the sky. So I'm going to subtract a linear gradient from the bottom part up, just like that. All right. And now let's simply bring down the exposure, making the top part of the sky darker. Now that looks really, really awesome. And we can also try making the subject a little brighter. So let's create a select subject mask. I'm not sure if this will work on here, but let's give it a try. You can see it did select a bit of the sky as well and a little bit of the foreground, but I don't think it's a big problem. Let's just try bringing up the whites here. Only a little bit. So you don't even notice the brighter part in the sky back there, just like that. All right, and finally, I want to change the boardwalk in the foreground by adding a radial gradient over it. I do want to have some more detail in here. That's the reason for me to add some texture and some clarity and maybe even some more brightness by bringing up the whites. All right, perfect. And that's it for the local adjustments. Again, let's compare to before. You can see now we do have some more contrast without losing too much brightness in here and the colors look much, much better, especially with the glow effect on the left side. Let's continue doing a little bit of color grading. I'm heading straight into the split toning tab right there. Let's start with the highlights. Of course, I do want to apply a warm color tone for them. So I'm looking for something in the red range like this and let's bring up the saturation. I'm going to push it quite a bit since we don't have that many highlights in here. That's looking really good already. Now let's check the midtones and for them I'd like to apply a colder color tone. Somewhere in the blue range like this and let's bring up the saturation. Let's see if we can enchant that somewhere with the shadows. And again, I'm just going with a cold color tone and very, very slightly bringing up the saturation here. Let's turn off the split toning for a moment and that looks so much better. All right, finally, we can head into the calibration tab. Here, let's just bring down the blue primary hue and boost the saturation again. Awesome. Actually, I might change the split toning again. I want to try give the midtones a warmer color tone. So let's change the hue. I just think that's more fitting for a sunset image. But let's bring down the saturation. Okay, yeah, that's better. So let's keep it that way. And finally, we can head into the details tab and then sharpen this image. All right. Then let's open it up in Photoshop to finish the editing. First off, of course, we want to fix the gaps and also maybe remove a few things. Therefore, let's create a backup layer by pressing Ctrl J. And on this new layer, I'm going to use the lasso tool, just create a rough selection. Once that is done, I'm going to hit Shift F5 and select Content Aware. Just hit OK and this should be fixed. That's looking very, very good. Then let's clean up the sensor spots. I'm probably going to skip that again in the video, but just keep in mind, I'm using the spot healing brush here. I still think the foreground lacks some brightness. So I'm using a levels adjustment layer. And here, let's bring up the point for the highlights more to the left. Now the foreground looks better, but I don't like how the sky changes. So I'm making use of that layer mask and with a black brush, I'm going to remove that part of the levels adjustment layer by just painting over it. All right. Now there's actually one more thing that's bothering me about the foreground of the image. And that is those poles right on the edge of the image. And I'm just using the clone stem tool to try and fix that. This might be a little more tricky. For this reason, I'm copying an area just on the edge between the railing and the sea. 
I'm holding down the Alt key, click in here, then I can copy it over to cover up this pole. Just carefully brushing my way along. Let's do the same on the bottom one. I think that's working pretty good here. That looks so much better. Now we just have to do the same thing on the other side. Again, I'm just relying on the clone stem tool, which is doing a great job here. Just always making sure to connect all those edges, which I'm copying. Compared to before, much cleaner. So now we can focus on finishing this shot. Maybe I do want to add a little more glow on the right, on the left side. So let's add a new layer, switch the blending mode to soft light, pick up the brush by pressing B, or down the Alt key to pick up a color tone from the bright spot. And we might want to adjust it a little bit, making it brighter, and maybe a little more orange. Okay, then let's drop the brush opacity, otherwise this effect might be too strong. Now let's carefully paint in some glow. All right, then I do want to merge all those layers. So I'm going to select them all and hit Control E. Let's head into the Nick Collection plugin. And first let's head into the polarization effect and just play around here. That looks much better in my opinion. So let's add some strength here. Okay, and let's see if we can add another filter. This time the Brilliance Warmth effect, adding a little more warmth. Actually, that doesn't look good, so I'm going to not use this one and just use the polarization effect and hit OK. So we might want to play around with a little more contrast. Let's use a curves adjustment layer this time and let's bring up the midtones a little bit and bring down the shadows. It's looking cleaner for sure. All right, I think I'm going with this. And finally, we might apply a photo filter adjustment layer just to give it this final touch of warmth. However, I don't want to have it over the whole image. So I'm selecting the layer mask and hit Control I to invert it. Then with a white brush, I'm going to paint in a little more warmth, especially on the left side, just like that. And that's it for editing this image. I hope the tutorial part about it in the beginning was helpful as well as the rest of the post-processing. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.